of Sassy Gamers. Today is September 26, 2021, and you're listening to Got Our Attention, Season 2, Episode 15. With me today, I have Kelly. What's up, guys? And uh, Bruno and Mike are on assignment this Mm. week, so they will not be joining us. On assignment or still hungover from last night. Uh, depends on which one you're talking about, quite possibly. Who knows? Yeah. I mean, you would think they would just jump on here and, you know, like chase the, here the dog. dog fur or whatever the thing is. <laughs> chase the dog fur. That's what the Roomba does. Chases the dog fur. <laughs> <laughs> you did that right as I was taking a sip. I'm I almost so sorry. spit that. <laughs> that was perfect. That we was almost perfect. had I mean, to that's... restart the podcast. <laughs> Yeah, right? And like, no, I, I almost had to, like, buy a new stream deck as it gets coated with, like, you know, Coca-Cola and stuff. <laughs> and stuff. Um, yeah. I mean, not that we're sponsored by Coca-Cola, because we're not. But, you know, if Coke wants to call us. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> that would actually be nice. That'd be nice to get, like, true sponsorship. That's, especially yes. Especially sponsors that are not directly gaming related, because... Mm-hmm. That that'd be much nicer is being able to have a sponsor where, you know, we don't feel like we have to talk about their game in a pleasing manner or yeah. something like that. You know, Bruno can be Bruno all that he wants. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Or any of us for that matter. Uh, but anyway, yeah. So it, it's, it's as Mike would say, it's been <laughs> it's a week. Been a week. <laughs> You know, you got to add that to the bingo. Yes, yes, I will. Got to add that oh, to the man, make a note. Cause, yeah, because that's, that's definitely one of his things. So, but enough of Mike saying, now it's time for one of Kelly's things. <laughs> Thanks, Brian. All right, uh, so I've got a couple of articles, but first, of course, my Halloween DIY for this week. Um, and it's kind of a two-parter, sort of, um, because both of them were kind of short. But uh, if you go to a Halloween store, you see lots of, you know, Halloween decor. So, or and not even just Halloween store. There's lots of other, you know, home companies, home type, you know, decor places. And they sell what is considered Halloween decorations and Halloween, um, you know, candelabras and you know candlesticks and vases and stuff like that and um i walked into one the other day and i saw a candelabra for 35 dollars, and it's a Mm -hmm. black yeah (laughs) black candelabra and i just always think people are crazy to buy this stuff because you know one it kind of looks cheap um two it's 35 dollars three Unless you're somebody like me, you're only going to use it for one month out of the year. (laughs) A lot of my decorations stay up. Um, Oh, to to be clear, (laughs) you're only using it one month out of the year because your husband is dictating that. If that is absolutely you, absolutely the case. Yes, (laughs) my home, my home would be straight up Halloween all year round. Uh, But yes, you are absolutely right, Brian. Uh, So what one thing tip or trick that I do is um, I go to Goodwill. I've already, I think I already mentioned, you know, go to Goodwill or other places, dollar store and fix stuff up. Um, So what I have done is I go to Goodwill. So everything I'm about to show you is a Goodwill piece. Um, And this was a ceramic vase that had ugly flowers on it. I mean, I'm sure it was beautiful in 1972, but um, I take a either black matte spray paint or a black semi-gloss and I spray paint everything. And so it's all the same color, but if you look for things with different textures, so this one is, has a really cool texture. Um, some of this is broken off. I found these with, matching. With that black paint, it's mm-hmm. almost like, uh, um, uh, who, who's the, we've said this before, the artist that does alien H.A. Geiger, I think. Yeah, I think you're right. Yeah. It almost looks like that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I found these matching their little, like, jewelry box things. It opens up, um, and they each had a really pretty flower on it. Painted those effers. Um, (laughs) 
<laughs> a little creamer nice. jar that I can put uh, flowers in. Same thing. So anything with like texture, it looks really cool. And then it all matches. Um, you can also do like a combination of like red, white, black, or you could, you know, black, purple, orange, stuff like that. Um, I also, it, it's, it, it's candelabras, another one, you know, there's some really ugly ones at the store at, at Goodwill, just spray paint a candelabra. Um, and then this was a like candle holder for a pillar candle. Um, and then I found this other really ugly, but nicely textured, a uh, vase that I painted black and oh, then cool. created these amazing flowers. So I got this set of flowers. This is very old decoration, probably five or six years ago. Um, so I did get this one at a home or a uh, craft place. So it was for Halloween, these pretty red roses, but I found some eyeballs that look very realistic and they were round eyeballs. They were supposed to like, float in a cup or something. I freaked out a friend once and brought her a glass of water at work and had a couple of eyeballs sitting in it. Um, so I took the eyeballs. I They came in half. So the back of the eyeball came off. Um, and I learned that it was better to have that part of the eyeball off because then they sit really nicely in the center of these roses <laughs> and freak people out. So people uh, that's always, cool. yeah, so it looks much more realistic. So just a little hot glue. And um, you got yourself some eyeballs. I saw um, online somewhere was selling these for like 50 bucks. I was like, I can make that. <laughs> so uh, this whole bunch was probably $4. That vase was probably $1.99. And then the eyeballs are maybe two or three bucks. So um, you can make some stuff for really cheap that looks really cool. And... Uh, Typically, when you make it, it's going to last a lot longer than you know, some of the cheaper stuff um, that I've had to, like I said in the last podcast, fix up. So that is my um, DIY hack of the week. Yeah, I do have a couple of articles for you, though. Um, one actually brought to us by Brian. Uh, there is a research uh, a set of researchers from University of Basel in Switzerland. Please forgive me if I've butchered that. Um, and they've developed a an app, uh, an uh, augmented reality, an AR app called Phobus. Um, and it's supposed to help you with your fear of spiders, arachnophobia. We've talked a lot about arachnophobia on the, the podcast. And we're like, hey, here's your arachnophobia warning. Or, uh, Brian, what was the one about the cockroaches? Um, I Crypto cannot remember. Blah, blah, dee, blah, Somebody, blah. Yeah, it was Anyways, super creepy. Um, so they've created this app to help you deal with your fear of spiders. They took 66 participants um, uh, and asked them to walk up to a clear glass cage with a spider in it and see how close they could get to it. And uh, the control group had never gone through this therapy. So what the app does is... You do a, a quick testing of like what your level of fear toward spiders is. And then they use that as their baseline and then slowly kind of ramp you up. So you can put it over, a, you know, a wall or your hand or something like that and desensitize yourself to your to, to the fear of spiders. Um, so they did note that those who did use the app actually did get closer to the caged spider uh, than those who did not. So it was kind of neat. Um, we, Brian and I were talking about it earlier. You know, I've got a fear of spiders. Um, I don't know if it's, it's definitely not as bad as my fear of cockroaches or heights, <laughs> but it's pretty bad. Um, but the, the app is $5. So if $5 is what it takes for you to get over your fear, if you're willing to spend the $5 in the app to get over your fear of spiders or help get over your fear of spiders, um, you definitely check it out. Uh, they did make mention, though, that um, the app is for those who suffer from a mild, clinically insignificant fear of spiders. And you must be 16 years or older <laughs> to be to be considered clinically insignificant. <laughs> so, um, so, so, <laughs> so what I take from that is that the app and possibly their limited research into the app is that people who are truly scared of spiders 
think that yeah. this is 100 percent real and have broken their phones. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> yes. So if you're following that <laughs> part of the scale. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, so. man. Maybe steer clear of the app then, but. <laughs> uh, Runner right. Diva made comment on your pew pew shirt. Oh, yeah. So I don't know if I can. You can just see my whole shirt. Um, this is one of my favorite shirts that my sister got for me. So pew pew, meta effos. <laughs> Trying not to swear. <laughs> Uh, all right. Uh, I did find another article about this guy who tweeted out a creepy doll that he found in his new home. Um, a homeowner in the United Kingdom uh, found this rag doll. I, I, I can I'll repost the tweet uh, from our um, Twitter. on our uh, uh, Twitter page. But uh, he found this creepy doll rag doll uh, in his behind one of his walls in his kitchen. He saw this wire sticking out where the old homeowners had kept their refrigerator. And he was like, this is kind of strange. So he starts pulling on the wire and it pulled away some of the um, drywall. And there's a creepy doll with a note in there. And the note said, thank you for freeing me. My original owners lived in this house in 1961. I didn't like them, so they had to go. All they did was sing and be merry. It was sickening. Stabbing was my choice of death for them. So I hope you have knives. Hope you sleep well. Um, <laughs> so the guy, you mentioned that uh, my friends are telling me I need to move out. But he thinks it's a joke. And I also think it's a joke. And I think it's a really awesome joke, though. Um, so <laughs> <laughs> it's definitely yeah, pretty. You would. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'll get to the, that in a second. Um, so uh, he he said he... Um, when he bought the house, he was told that about four or five years ago, the kitchen was renovated and also the paper that it was written on. It does not appear to be paper from 1961. It looks like pretty <laughs> new paper. Uh, but to your point, Brian, um, when my husband and I had uh, renovated one of our are the. <laughs> This is sad. It's uh, my daughter's bedroom, actually. Uh, there's a bump out there, and since they're going to be playing there, and you know, it's going to get messy, we actually put pulled up the carpet there, pulled up the carpet from the entire room, and uh, before we put down the new tile or new uh, linoleum stick, you know, piece, peel and stick tiles, uh, we did write like something creepy there for you know the next owners of the home. So if they ever do pull it up and, and change it. So I think things like that are really, really funny. And wow. You know, <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. Well, yeah, I mean, it's a person take some... I am real high class here. <laughs> it, yeah, it definitely took some forethought that somebody puts like basically a drywall patch. Mm hmm. It has a wire sticking out that when you pull on the wire, you're going to, Cuts, yeah, basically cuts. I, I'm envisioning this. Well, it's now, a, he pulled it out. And I think like I either think what got it is, stuck is, or whatever. I think the, I think the yeah. wire was laid around it. So when okay. he pulls it out, it pulls Maybe. the drywall patch loose. I'll have to uh, find the tweet. That's, yeah, that <laughs> looked really wow. cool. Yeah, it's genius. Somebody yeah. definitely did that on purpose. Yeah. And, and, and I mean, for me, I'm not going to pull a wire. <laughs> I'm going to be like behind here <laughs> this wire's just sticking out yeah unless well, it was i like, mean it depends yeah it's but. true if it was like a speaker wire or something maybe i'd be like <sighs> where's the speaker at <laughs> now regardless let's yeah. move on into the news Even when they had the pieces of paper on a lot of those news programs, there really wasn't yeah. anything on them. They had teleprompters. They That's had the true. paper there because people expected them to be reading from a piece of paper. That's true. It, or, or maybe if something happened to the teleprompter. I'm Ron Burgundy? Yeah. yeah. Well, I love it. I mean, like, you watch, like, the the, the Daily Show, and mm -hmm. it's blank pieces of paper yeah. all the time. Oh. <laughs> That's true. Uh, I think a lot of a lot of uh, SNLs like news weekly update or whatever it is. Yes, is weekly update. I like love well. weekly update. Yes. Uh, well, to start the news off with, 
Nintendo had a direct this week and during a, this direct, like most directs, they were dropping news about their games, things like that. <laughs> they dropped a bomb uh, that they are going to be closely involved with a new Mario movie. Now, the concept of a new Mario movie has been batted around quite a bit recently, the last couple of years. So that part wasn't all that much of a surprise. But they said, oh, well, it's going to release December 21st, 2022. Okay, so a bit more than a year out. Mm -hmm. Sounds fine. Uh, that Mario, who in the games is voiced by Charles Martinet, uh, Mario is going to be voiced, because this is an animated mm -hmm. show, by the animated way, not live movie. action. Uh, <laughs> Mario is going to be played voiced by Chris Pratt. Which... I don't, I don't know how he feel about that. He's not... <sighs> Mario is supposed to be an Italian plumber. Uh-huh. Even if they don't pronounce it in the Italian normal pronunciation of Mario, but... Chris doesn't like does does he even have an Italian accent? <laughs> I mean, uh, like, and I don't mean naturally. I mean in his acting. Career, I mean, has he... yeah, they've got coaches for that, but I just and he's got a good voice, but it to me it doesn't sound like Mario. Like they're really it's, uh, the, the uh, uh, Luigi is going to be played by um uh what's his name uh Charlie, uh, Charlie Day, Day who I love and adore and i think that's gonna work out well because i'm i, I just think charlie day is hysterical well, and it's, some of this casting is spot mm -hmm. on uh i'm not as familiar with uh anya taylor joy but she's peach she is um, the uh main actress from queen's gambit so, oh, I'll you, trust okay. you on that never one. mind oh yeah she's she's an incredible actress and also has a very nice voice uh i i think they nailed it with jack black Playing Bowser. I That's agree. Just hilarious. Yes, I, mean, I agree. Have you seen him on YouTube recently? <laughs> the, the man is like no F's given. Just like, yeah. like he, he was, he was growing the COVID beard before COVID started. Yes. Yes. Uh, he's been totally having fun with that stuff. Uh, you know, I'm so used to him being like clean shaven in the movies and everything. And just, he's just got this massive, like darn your like ZZ top almost type. Really? I'm going to have to check that out. Uh, it's not quite that long, but it's, it's getting there. Um, they got Seth Rogen as Donkey Kong. <laughs> I think that's going to be good hilarious. too. <laughs> And also that kind of depends on yeah. you know, where they're going in canon. No, we do know that the Donkey Kong that they're talking about is the current iteration of Donkey Kong because they also have Fred Armisen as mm -hmm. Crazy Kong. Now, for this goes in some crazy canon type stuff that Nintendo has that they say it works this way. Some people disagree, but I mean, it's Nintendo. So, I mean, they wrote the book on this literally, but Apparently, Cranky Kong is the original Donkey Kong from the first Donkey Kong arcade video game. OK, I get this now. I feel like I knew this, but it wasn't clicking. OK, now Donkey wow. Kong Jr. is his son. OK, and he's grown up and Donkey Kong, as we know him now, is actually Donkey Kong Jr.'s son. So oh. the Donkey Kong that you know from like Donkey Kong Country and, and and especially more recent games and animation and stuff like that is the grandson of the original Donkey Kong. And the original Donkey Kong, it, they call him Cranky Kong because he got old and cranky. Oh, I love this. I, I love uh, this. So, I'm so glad you're doing this story because I'm getting an education. <laughs> <laughs> I thought it was the same dude the whole time. I Cranky mean, Kong. I was like, Cranky Kong. I, did I miss a Donkey Kong or something? <laughs> yeah, actually, a couple, as it turns out. Well, and there's there's other Kongs as well. I mean, there's there's like Daisy Kong and, and yeah. a couple others. Uh, there's, you know, uh, Diddy Kong, which is, I think, Donkey Kong Jr.'s nephew or something like that. Okay. Uh, or he's Donkey Kong's nephew, younger nephew or something like that. There's a bunch of them. 
Uh, now, now I the whole Kong family lineage. We will have to find some way to provide that to you. <laughs> I kid you not. There is a Wikipedia page on this. Guaranteed. Oh, there's one for everything. <laughs> Uh, or at least there's a wiki page. Yeah. I don't know if it's a, a technically full Wikipedia, but it, it's yeah. a wiki type page. Uh, I actually, I truth be told, I knew about Cranky Kong and the and the lineage uh, prior to this movie stuff. Uh, but at the same time, I've only known about it for a couple of years at most, yeah. like maybe five. Uh, this is something that's relatively even new to me. Uh, so yeah, we'll have two Kongs in there. And the reason why I uh, was stressing this so much is because like Donkey Kong as the current iteration is not quite the nemesis of Mario that, you know, Cranky Kong, the original Donkey okay. Kong was, you know, because the original game was Mario versus Donkey Kong. And at that time he was called Jumpman. He wasn't even called Mario. That came later. Hmm. Um so uh, this 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 will be interesting. Uh, will the Kongs be working with Bowser, or will they be like you know, uh, uh, you know, or will this be like you know, uh, like an Avengers esque team up against a big bad type thing? You know. Yeah. Um, but yeah, they they got the whole thing out there, Kamex and its Spike, um, and they did say that Charles Martinet will be doing surprise cameos, voice cameos in this. Uh, which is very interesting because yeah, uh, like, are they going to have Chris Pratt voice all of Mario and then Charles Martin and Nett's going to come in and go, woohoo. <laughs> you know what I could see happening? I could see it being, <clears throat> so there's this game, Super Mario Brothers, and the backstory is it's, it's, you know, Chris Pratt and Charlie Day talking about like, the stuff in the game and then be like, can you believe they made me do this? And I could see that. And so therefore mm, Chris Martinet still. No, 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 no. <laughs> that face. <laughs> like, no, because I was like flashbacking to the original movie. <laughs> okay. Never mind. I had to... not seen the original movie. Never mind. Oh, oh uh... I know. I did see the original movie. It was back in like, 1990 something though yes it was okay. very early on a mm -hmm. uh, lot a lot of people tore it apart and i mean it's it's not a great movie so i get it yeah but also at the time they didn't really have like there wasn't a story yeah for mario at the time right right and mario brothers they just like here's this licensed thing and they're like here's some names of some characters and yeah. like you go have fun with it. And, yeah. uh, it, it was really interesting. It had some interesting parts and points. Mm -hmm. Uh, a lot of people will hate it. I'm sure. Oh, but, I can't wait to look at the reviews on this. Then maybe I'll watch it. Just, just uh, each, jog my memory. If you do watch it and then read the reviews, I have another piece of media that you'll need to watch afterwards. Okay. And it's not long but it will be worth it. I guarantee you. And I promise you. Yeah. Other uh, than that, I'm not going to say anything more because like, anyway, uh, that wasn't the only news coming out. There was lots of other news about other games and stuff like that. But I think the other kind of noteworthy news that came out was that they mentioned Bayonetta three. And for those who don't know, Bayonetta is started off, uh, multi-platform or maybe it was just PlayStation. I had it on like PlayStation two, I think. Okay. And, and this is a uh, game I have never, I had never seen or heard of until, um, to today. earlier today when Brian and I were talking. So I, you know, I think we mentioned like one of the, the things about me joining the podcast is that I love gaming. I do. I really enjoy it. I don't play a ton of genres because I'm not very good at them. But one thing I'm really good at is asking questions <laughs> about these games that maybe you guys yeah. are thinking of as well. So this, this one was, mm -hmm. this one kind of shocked me. And as a lover of fashion, uh, I was really interested in, um, in some of if, the, uh, accessories, if you will. <laughs> oh, okay. So, uh, yeah, and I'll, I'll get into that. So Bayonetta yeah. is this interesting game. Let, let's start with the type of genre. Mm -hmm. It's, it's, it's very much in the line of a devil may cry. 
okay. or similar to that where you have third person perspective, kind of over the shoulder perspective, right? As you're, you know, guiding your character through the world and it's, uh, it's a beat em up. Uh, you, you fight waves of creatures until you get to a boss and there's a little story in between. Uh, it's very action oriented and it's very much move oriented. Like you learn certain moves, you know, like X, X, Y is, you know, something, okay. you know? Uh, does a certain move of yours and, and you power up your moves. So there's a little bit of RPG ish time in there where you're like uh, getting a better move set as you go along. Uh, lots of air juggles, uh, similar to devil may Cl- cry. Uh, also Bayonetta was known for just these really bombastic over the top fighting areas. Like you would be fighting on the, on a jet as it's flying through the air and these like demons are coming down to it because you play a witch, mm. a special type of witch that uh, specializes in fighting supernatural creatures. Uh, you right. tend to try to defeat evil ones, but you know, if, it, if an angel is getting uppity and you need to smack it around, you know, you'll do that as well. Uh, and she, <laughs> smack she those angels around, <laughs> she specializes in hair magic. Her, her magic is mostly involving her extremely long hair. In fact, it usually, <sighs> Is her clothing in very interesting ways? Okay, cool. All right. And if she could perform Uh, some magic on my hair, I would appreciate that. Yeah, it's (laughs) it's pretty amazing. Uh, Now, not all of her clothing. She she is well known for uh, wearing very stylish boots or stilettos, the heels of which are typically large guns. So she literally like will do flying kicks towards something and then shoot. (laughs) The guns and the heels of her boots, on top of the fact that she's carrying guns with special bullets that <laughs> she's can like, like very well accessorized. <laughs> she's very well accessorized. She and she's got she usually has great glasses. It, and admittedly, the art style is very much out of like well, pretty much the nineties. Uh, today it would probably be considered uh, hypersexualized. Okay. Uh. And it, but, the art style does not seem to have happened, uh, changed too much um, okay. since then. But at the same time, she she is a strong female character that you know it doesn't take no, and she mm-hmm. she's confident in herself. Uh, now she wears so glasses. She does wear glasses. I think mm-hmm. that was because of the whole librarian kink being thrown in. There. Oh, got it. When you see the glasses, you'll yeah you'll you yeah. watch them again. So Bayonetta came out. And was kind of had a cult following. Bayonetta 2 was announced and then kind of died off. And then Nintendo came in and kind of saved it. And because of that, Bayonetta 2 pretty much only released on Nintendo platform. Okay. And then now Bayonetta 3 was announced December 7th, 2017. Uh, again, 2017. Jeez. When they last, this is pretty much the last they've really talked about it. Wow. Too. So it was during the game awards. 2017 was pretty much the last time they did. And then just within this last week, they dropped a trailer for it. And this trailer is, this is just on YouTube. You can check it out. And it is interesting. Let's call it that. I like this guy gets hit. He kind of turns around. And he's like, what? Because this is the type of <laughs> demonic creatures you're kind of fighting in this. Yeah. And there's just this thing. This is just my favorite part of the trailer. He's all like, wow. So again, she has a lot of magic. Time control <laughs> and time bug. change is one of her magics. There she's coming down. <laughs> no. I'm yep. late. love these shoes. But I'm ready to give you everything you want. And all of it, she goes, it seems I'm unfashionably late. Mm-hmm. Uh, now, you'll notice her skirt has braids. Those okay. aren't just braids. Those, those braids are coming from her skirt. There's a bow and braids on the back of her skirt. Oh. <laughs> 
Even her skirt has hair. <laughs> well, that's because her skirt's made out of her hair. Um, oh my gosh. And again, it, it's just fun action, fun playing around yeah. with things. She's just like that giant fist coming out of nowhere, punching this person. Uh, you know, this giant kaiju monster comes down. So her response is like, hey, I'm going to dance. Interesting. Yeah. Which, so which casts a spell and creates a giant hair kaiju. Oh, God. So this is, you know, I've got a thing about hair. Oh, there's the, like a negative or a positive thing? Like a, a, a negative. I can't clean the brushes out of my own hair. My oh, my hair out of ooh, my own brushes. Yeah, like I um <laughs> quick that's quick a little thing. story here. So my amazing husband um is so sweet to pull the hair out of my brushes. When I before I had met him, uh when I would go to visit my sister, she'd see my brush and she'd pull the hair out of my brush. Um and one of my daughters actually does it for me now too with like she just I, I walk in and I'm like, my brush is clean. And I'm like, and she's like, I cleaned your brush. And I'm like, oh, my God, it's so sweet. <laughs> yeah, I thought those were feathers on her skirt, though. That's hair. Oh, God. Yeah. <laughs> well, they're feathers for you. And it's yes, on Switch, they're feathers. So it's as far be, as I'm concerned, they're feathers. And it's, it's going to be a smaller screen. So you, yes. you won't be able to make oh, out perfect. details as well. It's, it's black perfect. fur or feathers yes. or whatever yes. works for yes. you. I'm good with that. I'm totally good with that. Um, <laughs> Uh, naturally sourced and uh, yes. um, uh, from stuff that fell off of animals. She did yes. not like cruelty not free. Cru cruelty yes. free. Thank you. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. <laughs> it's the ultimate cruelty. Oh my free. gosh. It's created of your own fur. <laughs> yes. It's true. It's true. Uh, yeah. So yeah, Bayonetta three, uh, they're talking that it's going to come out uh, looking uh, sometime probably next year, I believe is what awesome. they're thinking. Are you getting a cocktail delivery? Coffee. Oh, it was almost cool. I no, no, but I mean, you just you just take the coffee and then you can like put something else in it, and then it there is you a cocktail. go. Oh heck yeah, that was genius. Please oh, tell your lovely rum, wife. Rum coffee is thank you the, from all of us. <laughs> thank you from all of us. Says the lovely Kelly to the, Cheers. my lovely wife. Thank. <laughs> She's thumbs up in the background. Mm -hmm. So yeah. uh, it was very interesting after not hearing about this game for nearly four years yeah. that uh, all of a sudden they just dropped a trailer for it of that's unknown, really cool. Unknown amount of completeness of the game, of course, but uh, you know, I, I'm kind of excited for it. I don't know if I'll ever get it. I, I didn't even play the first one all that much, but uh, good on them because the people that like that game really like that game. And if you yeah, like they're that diehard. type of game, because that's the main thing. Yeah. I didn't have a problem with Bayonetta. Mm. I just not that big on that type of game. Yeah. Uh, kind of the adventure, beat them up, move them around. Uh, I just don't play it that much. Yeah. Uh, it, 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 it takes a little bit of dedication to play. Uh, think almost think of the combat like boyfriend dungeon, except for you okay. know, three dimensional and more hair. And more fur. <laughs> yes. <laughs> there was a lot of hair in Boyfriend Dungeon too, to be fair. So <laughs> uh, there was, there was, uh, there, there were other things in the Nintendo direct as well. If you're interested, go check it out. Uh, there's a lot of interesting articles and a lot of interesting, they it's, it's a video. You can watch it. Uh, I just thought that those were probably the two most fun ones for yeah. that particular event. Awesome. Well, with that, uh, <laughs> we're going to take a break. All right. Uh, that would be normally the time that I'd get a coffee delivery. <laughs> so hang out and listen to these words from our sponsor. <laughs> just going to lead off nor like we normally do after the break. Uh, just going to jump right into it with uh, what we've been playing. All right. Uh, there is a game that we love to play. Uh, 
called phasmophobia. We've talked about it several times on the show. And any time something phasmophobia related shows up in the news, we always have to talk about it and we tell each other about it and it, drop it on the discord. Yeah. Drop it on the discord. We I add, I've actually, like I've joined the phasmo discord. <laughs> like we just love phasmophobia. It's <laughs> yes, uh, a little bit more than me then. That's a little overboard, but whatever. Um, so Phasmophobia just released uh, a new update with uh, some pretty awesome overhauls. It's uh, the anniversary update. So this is the one-year anniversary of Phasmophobia. Again, Phasmophobia started with one developer. Wait, it's um, only been a year? It's only been a year. It Only a year? Oh, yeah. Wow. It's been an amazing year. Yeah. Isn't that crazy? Okay. Yeah. yeah. Wow. I know. It feels like a lot longer than they with one developer for that long. They made so much progress. Um, and we talked about a couple of the other updates recently that you know, they've added in um, some graphic designers and stuff like that. But um, phasmophobia is gold. Oh yeah. <laughs> Did anybody hear that? Uh, so as part of the anniversary update, uh, a couple of cool things have been changing. Um, one one of the main things is that you now there is a single single player mode, um, so you know, you can join. It won't uh, join to a server. Uh, so if you really want to freak yourself out or you're sick of waiting for your friends to join <laughs> your, your team, you can play on your own. Um, in the main lobby, y y there's like a party area. Like you can now, like party in the main the the uh, main menu area so that's I a mean, new thing we so we did that anyways we did but like i think it's a little bit different we and i have not played it yet since this update yeah. came out so we need to to get on that yes. um some of the most significant changes though were uh, uh with regard to the journal um, they totally redesigned it uh made it easier to use made it, made it easier to navigate it was kind of clunky and just if you've played it you know what we're talking about um you can mm -hmm. out like cross off evidence on the ghost evidence page so nice. yeah which i mean somebody always had to run back to the trailer and be like okay what do we need left did anybody blow out a candle uh so now we've got all of that um the pause menu um is integrated with the journal and then while you're in the journal you can now make changes to other settings. So that means for those of you who have to exit out to change your audio so that you don't have to push to talk, now you can do that in the journal. Hallelujah. Uh, some of the other new things that they added in, just with looking at the release notes, um, they added the offline single player mode, um, and then they also added in some new fonts for uh, languages that had missing characters. Um, if you lose, you, <laughs> sorry, if you lose, you no longer have to pay $10 for failing. Um, you get insurance instead, uh, depending on your difficulty. Uh, in my favorite is if you fail, you now get to see what the ghost type actually was, which is always so frustrating yes. for me before. Yes. Uh, actually, uh, I read that originally and I was like, wait. Didn't we already? And we're like, no, no, oh. we didn't. That's right. We didn't. Somebody it was always like, oh, was it a mare? Or was it a uh, Junya? Yeah, and yeah, so now you it, 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 like process of elimination. Ah, I guess I well, wasn't I a Junya. I think the insurance change was done because they're mm. doing a single player mode. Because it, it used to be before oh, that yeah. you would like, you would like lose all your money and all your equipment if mm. you died the equipment that you donated for that run. Yeah. Unless someone took a picture for insurance. Yes. For insurance. To, you know, and then, and then you got, uh, you got uh, all or a chunk of it back or whatever. So it sounds like they're just making the insurance a standard because yes. like no one's going to take your picture if you're in there by yourself. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that makes total sense. Uh, they it's also did one of those national geographic things. Look at this camera we found in the haunted house and <laughs> and the ghost took all these pictures and it's like yeah. you know pictures of the ghost hold it face self and then like, yeah, you know, like, like the gorilla ones <laughs> that's awesome I did that a bear one awesome. recently oh nice i'll check that one out 
Uh, they fix a bunch of glitches, bug fixes. Um, it used to be that you could hide like just your head behind something. You know, when you can like go into people's heads and see like the inside of their eyes, balls and stuff. Um, you could like hide inside of something like a gas container with the rest of your body like exposed and the ghost wouldn't see you. <laughs> That's no longer uh, there. So yeah. Um, and if you like got it's up like on like, the, like the, like that should just be a feature. Like, you know, <laughs> Brian got killed because he thought he was an ostrich. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> it's like a new achievement. Yes, <laughs> that's really what it should have been. Um, and if you like in a higher spot too, whenever you were like, oh my God, why didn't it see me? I'm, I'm not dead. It's because it was a bug. So um, those are like of the bugs that those are the two that like actually affected people I know. Um, but they also did say in the release notes that or in the release notification that they're going to have a special Halloween update. So keep your eyes peeled for that. Can't wait to play that one. Or watch someone play it. Yes. For an or hour. <laughs> By themselves? Oh my gosh. Oh, Kelly, you are so mean. I That's am devious. so mean. I didn't even think about that. Shocktober? Yes. Oh I was going to say it out loud in case he was listening. I don't think he's listening. I don't think he's listening. And yeah, if he is, it's... he has just spit out his beer. So yeah, we're watching. Yeah, it's... no, he'd be he'd wow. he'd have said something by now. Oh, God. <laughs> Hopefully he doesn't make it this far when he listens to it. <laughs> okay, that was mean. And that, I love it. I love it. Good. Um, oh, this is going to be so good. Maybe that should yeah. be the first one. No, it's got to be the last one. You think so? Okay. Oh, because of the Halloween update. Well, yeah. well because all the rest of them are going to be crud compared to that one. Mm. It's it's really the only game that truly plays into his his to say, concerns. Mm -hmm. uh, so <laughs> it's got to be the last one. For those of you who may be uh, watching or listening to us for the first time. Um, Mike Zycia, our usually our host, um, he is, does not play scary games. Um, cannot stand them. Doesn't like scary movies. And runs the game. The, the creepy of yes. scary. Like he has no problems with zombies and shooting yeah. zombies and stuff like that. And most most of the like he was bored by the the Resident Evil Seven I think it yeah. was not the Is most the... recent one the one before yeah the creepy family one and yeah. they're not creepy in the right way so they're just gross creepy yeah so um, he does not yeah he doesn't like ghosts or like you know creepy sounds in the background yeah stuff. Stuff that he doesn't really see, uh, yeah, but is aware of. That's yeah. where his fear lies. And the great thing about it is what he does uh, each October. It's an annual thing now. Mm -hmm. This will be the first time that's an annual thing. Uh, each Friday, he sits down for an hour to an hour and a half, two hours if he's really good, and plays whatever creepy games we can come up with. Yes. For charity. So he's doing specifically it specifically the able gamers charity. Exactly. And uh, so our goal is to beat what got donated last year. Yeah. And uh, if barring that, if we don't do that, if we at least make him pee his pants. Yes. If he if he pees his pants, I will donate a hundred dollars personally. If he poops his pants, I'll double that. It has got to be proof, though. Yes. Oh, I like, want proof. Yeah. yeah, I don't want him dropping a drink or yeah, no, no, no. <laughs> I I'm on to you, Mike. Don't worry. Mm -hmm. That's not chalk. That's chocolate, buddy. That's not poop. I've seen it. I'm a parent too. Whoa. <laughs> I, uh, have, mama twins. I could understand. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Okay. Yes. What yes. else have you been playing? So what our, our game of the moment. Game of the moment. Bum, 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 bum. was uh, the coin game. 
And let me just say, I did not do it justice. Um, the coin game is this open world. Yes, you did. Amazing game. It's got two different settings, though. Like, you can play it as party mode, which is you, you just it, it, your uncle Larry owns the place. You get to play everything for free or survival mode. Yeah, uncle. Yeah, well, that's it to be decided. Um, but it, the I, so I played it in birthday mode, which means I had a little card and I got to do whatever I want. So every game that I played, I got to play for free. Everything that I bought, I bought for free, um, which is a great intro into the game. Um, but if you are like me and you love like arcade games and specifically the like fair games type thing too yeah like uh I, i'll just go ahead and say Prize dave games. and busters yeah like if you've ever been to like a dave and busters and there's that game where there are coins uh, on different shelves and you put a quarter in and the quarter goes down and then it gets pushed by one of the paddles that pushes it toward the other level and every once in a while you put a quarter down and it pushes it and it pushes more on the lower level and then eventually you get a couple of quarters back or you get a little prize or you get some free I mean, tickets, tickets or something. come out. Yeah. I'll tell you the number one thing that I think Dave and Buster's mm. did wrong. Mm. is they got rid of the tickets. Oh yeah. I mean, cause then you, you can't carry them around and, and, and see. And yeah. Cause they used to even weigh them. Like it was a thing. It was cool. Yeah. yeah. Like now you can't granted, see yes, what you're counting them or weighing them or, or mm. whatever. T always took a lot more time. And you know, now they just have a card that your tickets it's are on. Part of the process. It's like the card is so boring. It's it's just fun when you're playing skee ball and these tickets yes. just keep going ka chunk ka chunk ka chunk ka chunk, yes. ka -chunk, ka -chunk, ka -chunk. And they just start piling up around your feet. Like it that's... really was amazing. You could see your progress and like yeah. and it would amp you up. Um so skee ball, so the that game is in this game, and that game is what it's named after. Um, but there's also ski ball. There was this hockey game that I had never seen, but everybody else had, um, where it was little hockey pucks going around in a circle and they had different values on them. And there was a little hockey puck that, you know, when you push the button, it would push, you know, anything that was in front of it. And you, would you know, earn and extra points or point down. Yeah. So only the point would push the little hockey pucks. Yeah. So you can't, you get, you earn tickets. Um, oh, the claw game. That one that everybody mm -hmm. cannot stand and gets so frustrated with. That was in there. Um, or something. And you so. Such easy mode. Oh, yeah. the, 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 the Plinko type game. Yes. Plinko Dunko. from. Yeah. Dunko. It was called Dunko. Oh, that one's a lot of fun. I love, I love me some Dunko. Yeah, they had so. the stacking game, uh, the video stacking game. They, they, yeah. they had the key game, which as we yep. know, uh, Sega, we had a story on that where Sega has actually rigged it. So it's actually gambling and not skill based. Mm -hmm. Uh, so they, they had all these games, but it, don't, it was, don't, it, it doesn't stop there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Kelly, blew my mind when she <laughs> walked out of there and then mm. went in a golf cart to a convenience store on a joy ride. Yeah. So in the survival mode portion of it, you need to keep your sugar levels up and make sure you eat. And as you play these games, you get prizes and you can redeem them at the pawn shop. But so that's even funnier. Yeah. Um, so that you earn money and you you, know, you kind of work your way up like any survival game. Um, but since I was playing in birthday mode, I just basically stole this golf cart. I put my little card in and they took the what was this, that little bar called that they had in the 90s? Oh, the, the club. The club. Yeah. So the club came off and I just like I started hightailing out at a dodge to the end of the island. And uh, I eventually was able to. Oh, I eventually ran out of gas. Should have filled up. Mike kept telling me to fill up, but I didn't. Um, went to a convenience store, uh, made my way to a, uh, oh, convenience store. I was able to buy scratch off tickets. <laughs> that was fun there at the top of the, top of the arcade. There's actually a little place. that has got some, it's like a table and chairs set up. Like just people are drinking beer and stuff and you can scratch off some tickets there. It's a, if you're looking to play the game, I'm actually surprised they don't have like them. Kino and horse racing going on up there. Oh, 
They do. They yeah, they they did in the other places though. Yes, yes, yes. So the top of it is literally like just exposed to the outdoors I mean, this and it's thing like just keeps getting better and better. It's like mm-hmm. every freaking game. It's and so there was, much fun. there was another arcade because there was the UFR arcade that we didn't go to but well, we saw on the map. Yes, we didn't go to the UFR arcade, and that's actually a per- somewhat new addition when I looked at the release notes. Uh, but I did go to the carnival. So I went to the carnival and I was able to get on the ship, the the swinging okay, so ship. I want to say this again. Mm. This was a game that where you're in an arcade yeah. and you're playing all the classic like ticket arcade games. And you went outside, you got on a golf course, golf cart, and you went to a freaking fair. Yes. A full <laughs> on 100% working carnival. Yes. I was like, what is this game? It's only $14 and it's in early access. It's, but you it's were, been in early access since 2017, though, by the way. So <laughs> let me to be you clear. Were but at a carnival. Yeah. It, it's. Uh, a lot of fun. Like, it's one of those things, if you want, you need something to, like, take your mind off the day and you don't want to die for the 15th time in the same spot you died in, you know, play yeah, this in birthday The squirt gun mode. game. Yes. The squirt gun to move The squirt gun horse race game. Although I think they cheated on that. I totally think they were cheating on that one, they, by the they way. Cheated. Yeah. Uh, they, they had that all these carnival games. You Mm -hmm. got on a carnival ride and rode a carnival ride. That was insane. You actually won a day drinker appropriate giant purple snake. I did. I won a giant purple snake. (laughs) It was awesome. Yeah. So it's a cute game. It's fun. Every time you turned around, you were just blowing my mind with that. Game. <laughs> I was like, let's go over here. Let's go over there. Uh, it was cute. Yeah. So uh, am I good at survival games? That's for darn sure. No. Uh, but do I love playing some arcade games? I definitely do. And we had some fun and it was it was fun getting the guys to be like, no, do this. Go to the right. Go to the left. Like it was it was a lot of fun. It was yeah, it was fun to crowdsource too. I yeah, could see yeah. this being that being a fun streaming game with, yes, when you have yes. an audience going along with you. Uh, interesting. And it does on the the as you um, start scoring points as as the game ends, it tells you what your global score is. You know, so that was that was global kind of fun. Global. Yeah, so you got you got yeah. a global ranking. <laughs> well, yeah. uh, I've been playing Fortnite. Uh, what? No, sh- no shocker what there. It- what is this game Fortnite you speak of? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> uh, but what I did do differently this week is I played Fortnite on my phone. Mm. Uh, Android on device. your phone, Android device to be specific. You played it. OK, talk. About Interesting. Players. Interesting that you I played this played on my phone, on a non Apple phone. Yeah, okay. we'll get to that in a second. Uh, it's not, okay. it's not, yes. Unintentional tie-in, but yes. Okay, okay, okay. <laughs> uh, no, I like... Okay, first off, uh, I did not use a controller. I used the touchscreens on the phone. Okay. Do not recommend. <laughs> Does not even, recommend. <laughs> even with auto fire on, I do not recommend that. <laughs> Holy cow. Like it was terrible. <gasps> Would um, you recommend this setting to a friend? Like it, it was responsive. Don't get me wrong. Thumbs like, down. You know, like when you moved your thumbs, it would do, but it was so easy to get outside of the zone that it mm-hmm. thought where your thumb should be for looking or moving. Uh, it's, it's also played on this little itty bitty device. So it was much harder to tell certain things apart. Uh, okay. The graphics were still good. I mean, it, like it looked I was shocked at how good it looked on the phone. Wow. But at the same time, it's just, it's still on this tiny little screen and like from far away. Okay. Is that a person sitting there getting ready to shoot me? Or is that a traffic cone? <laughs> I can't tell. <laughs> and in goodness knows in Fortnite, it could be a person that looks like a traffic cone. Yeah. I mean, with their skins and crazy. Exactly. Thing, it could have been like, the banana guy. Like, eh, you never know. Oh, like, like, <laughs> don't you diss Mr. Peely. 
He's cool. Mr. Peely. No, I'm not. I'm not dissing him, but he does kind of look traffic coney. <laughs> but yeah, it's just I I could see it being workable if you you if you had like an actual controller. Okay. Uh, you know, you're not going to have the fidelity of, of mouse and keyboard, but people do fine on controller. Like p- people do great yeah. on controller. Actually, they get used to it. Uh, especially if you got something, you know, one of those things that hooks onto your controller and then like holds the phone uh, oh, up above yeah, the yeah. controller. They got They got a couple just, of those things. Just I 3d see print that. one of those. You'd be fine. Yeah, sure. Uh, I, I could see that being, that'd be workable. Like, like if you, oh, yeah. if you really had to do your Fortnite and you were in the restaurant, you, know, if I you really my... had to, he's doing his Fortnite in his room again. <laughs> if he had to do his Fortnite, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> wow. They might, they make, make they might make a law against yeah. that. <laughs> they keep trying, huh? <laughs> uh, he, he starts doing his Fortnite in the restaurant. Then yeah. Then that, that, that's a, a problem. When, He's doing his Fortnite in the restaurant again, honey. Oh, we got to stop this. Why? You got to talk to him. You got to talk to him. Sorry. <laughs> Sorry, guys. We're just drinking and cracking up here. <laughs> wow. That was that was real good. Thank you. I'll um, bring her out later. You should hear my other mom voice. <laughs> that sounds more like, like an aunt it is aunt an aunt an aunt your british Um, aunt says it's not british i don't know what you're drinking honey but you can't tell that it's a british aunt (laughs) it's not british at all Uh, cheers folks sorry (laughs) um no like like if you seriously did not have like if you were on a vacation and you needed to do your dailies or something goofy like that, like you just couldn't be torn away from this. Yeah. I could see the phone on top of a controller being workable on the phone itself. It is not workable. Uh, it's like you just, I was able to complete a particular quest that I was doing, but like I was on auto fire because I just didn't want to mess with it. And I, tried yeah. to get into a car and I walked up to the car and I started shooting the car. And I was like, well, okay, this car's half wrecked now by the time I get into it. But I, I'm probably never going to play it on my phone again. Uh, I'll just okay. stick to playing on the computer. Pass. Ah, with that, we will get into not just our news, but our short news. Ooh. Trying to make a short joke. No, Mike's not here. Okay. <laughs> oh, did you hear that, Mike? <laughs> nope, so starting off our short news is uh, <laughs> now that the Epic and Apple lawsuit is done, where the judge actually ruled in the favor of Apple for, I think, eight or nine out of ten of the counts. But the important count was that, you know, they couldn't prevent people from having basically in-app purchases, which was mostly what started this in the first place. So you would have thought that Epic would have been, hey, we can sell our V-Bucks on iDevices now. Let's jump right back on there. And, and Apple said, hey, you know, they even tweeted out, hey, we welcome uh, Fortnite and Epic back onto the App Store. And then Epic turned around and said, and we're now appealing all of that because we didn't win enough. Mm-hmm. To which Apple promptly said, okay, (laughs) there is no more Fortnite and nothing else Epic is going to be allowed on the iDevices at this time. And Tim Sweeney got really mad about that and tweeted it out and said that this is bull hooky because they said they were going to let us back on. Well, yeah, I mean, but you also Mm -hmm. were a jerk about it. So they then decided not to let you back on. You were a sore loser. (laughs) There was, there was no contract signed here. You know, Uh, if anything, you guys breached the contract when you sat there and went against their contract about not having in-app purchases. Yes. Now, uh, especially since you had purposely done that so you could start the lawsuit and that came out in this lawsuit. Mm. So that all got goofy. And now Epic's, as as I said, it was my Android device that I played Fortnite on my phone because you cannot do it on Apple devices. Or at least you can't buy it. 
think if you possibly uh, you, if you already <clears throat> own it, you might be able to good, play it. That's it. Yeah. Uh, anybody listening or watching, if you guys can tell us if you have it on your phone already, but you probably didn't because it, based on our review just a moment ago, it kind of sucks to play without a controller. Uh, let us Email know. your comment to GOA at sasgaming.com or put your comment on whether we can do that or not in the comments below. Or <laughs> can tweet to us. <laughs> on the comments Tweet is tweeting's cool. Yes. Yeah, comments below, whatever. Yeah. Uh, Sorry, this... I totally threw you off. No, no, no. All, all the time I just look mm. at my wife and like, put your comments below. <laughs> She's like, nope. <laughs> oh, she she's gonna kill me for that one. <laughs> oh man! All right, uh, Farmville announced they're gonna release a Farmville three for just mobile. Um, oh, are you gonna are you gonna play it for us? What? Um, wait, wait for it. And we're back. Uh, so it, it's going to be Farmville 3. You're going to be able to, you know, build a farm from scratch and whatnot again. Grow crops, variety of animals. But you're also going to be able to breed and nurture these baby animals. She was bottle feeding that baby animal. Yes, so, yeah, yes. there absolutely was bottle feeding going yeah, on there. Definitely. Um, um, but also right now, there's a Farmville there 3 animals already, <laughs> by the way. Uh, that firm built three animals is you raise baby animals and stuff, and you don't like build your farm and tend your farm, but you raise money for the farm. So it kind of sounds like maybe just like a combo. Uh, <laughs> I don't know. Are you sure that's from Zynga? Yeah, they already have okay. a farm built three. Yeah, uh, well, farm uh, built three. I was saying the other one because sometimes there's fake apps farm like that. The Farmville Three Animals thing you were saying. Sure, I will do we'll my research. Check on and... that. Yeah, I was pretty sure in the article that I read that it was from Zynga also, but I will double check. If you know better than me, when you can check, we can correct the statement uh, in just a moment. Um, there's no official date. Uh, it's still like coming soon. Uh, but as soon as there is an official date, we will That's let you from know. Zynga. It is okay. So it is from Zynga. Zinga. So they're um, releasing two apps. That's no, interesting. That's, Farmville Three Animals has already been released. Is already available via mobile. You can well, already that's what play. I'm saying. I mean, they're they got Farmville two Farmville Three, three things that they're letting that they're yeah. It's out. weird. Yeah, and that may not be the only Farmville Three thing either. Yeah, you know, li literally, some CEO walked in and said, "We got to get the like." My graph mm. is too low. The like the blue line's going down towards the red line. Wow. We need to send something out right away. And the dude's like, "Well, I mean, the Farmville Three is not done. You gave me that great demo of like feeding <laughs> the some baby animals, animals. The other day. <laughs> that baby animal thing. Sh ship Let's that out. This. I almost said a different word. <laughs> <laughs> he did say ship that out." <laughs> And the guy's like, uh, okay, well, yeah, it, like it almost sounds like they did something like that where they're just like, yeah, throw that out the door. Yeah, it, I was, I was a little surprised too. And, um, it's not also, at least as of right now, not going to be on Facebook. You know, Farmville originally was on Facebook, and, um, so that was a big hubaloo. It, 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 Farmville one and two, Farmville and Farmville two were both on Facebook. And when they announced that Farmville two was no longer going to be, um, there, there is, there is going to be dead. That's when Facebook was like, okay, no more flash games. Cause Farmville was so successful and it was a flash game. So. So recently that. someone saw that steam had, uh, filed a patent to let user play games as they're downloading. Apparently they filed for this patent in March of 2020 I think that's odd because people that have yeah. played World of Warcraft are already used to that, where you can play the game before the entire game is downloaded because it brings down the important files first and the first content that you're going to see uh, and installs it on your drive right away. And then the rest of the content that you wouldn't see until you're much higher level comes down afterwards. Uh, 
and this patent sounds very similar where they're saying, hey, we're going to bring down critical files first so that you can start playing right away that they actually will use data by tracking the read operations of normal file use, normal gameplay to get a digital map of which game files need to be down there first. And that's probably where their patent is truly centered around. Cause again, the concept of playing while you're still downloading the game has been out there for a while. It hasn't always worked well. Right. Some people have done it and some game developers have done it. And then like you just come up and you're just sitting on a trailer screen while it's downloading stuff. And that's, that's not playing a game. Yeah. But I think this whole digital mapping based off of normal play use to determine which files need to come down first automatically. That's probably where their patent is. And I don't know, it's pretty interesting. Hey, if it makes it easier for those that don't have fiber to, well, even those with fiber, I mean, some of these games. Yeah. It massive. actually, one of the things it said was, uh, it, it is going to be dependent on your your uh, bandwidth. Bandwidth, yeah. How big is your pipe? Yes. <laughs> oh, it comes back to the size of your pipe. <laughs> Sorry. I'll drink for that one. Remember, it's not the speed, it's how wide it is. Uh, sure. Yeah, I'll, I'll go with that one. For, for it's this called one. bandwidth. I'll go with that one for right now. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> All right. Uh, so we're <laughs> never gonna let be allowed to host this again. <laughs> or, or maybe they always will. Um, one way or the other, we're about extremes here. <laughs> we're going from one edge to the other. Where's the line? Because we don't know anymore. We've crossed it so long, so many times. Um, it's got rubbed off. Who's Oh, God, he didn't just do that with the bandwidth. <laughs> uh, so we're back. Uh, who hates getting DMCA'd for something that's being played in the background or somebody's singing a song and now you're you're you messed up? Yeah. Uh, so when in, you know, beginning of 2020, when everybody started streaming lots of stuff online, there were lots of other people trying to make money. Um Twitch was actually getting approached by record labels being like, hey, your streamers are not abiding by the Digital Millennium uh, Copyright Act of 1998. And uh, stream, uh, Twitch was like, we got to stop these people because we don't want to get sued. And then they were DMCAing people for stuff that they really, they were just hypersensitive to it. Well, uh, Billboard is reporting uh, or revealing, I guess, uh, that Twitch and the National Music Publishers Association, the NMPA, um, are close to putting uh, uh, together or are almost done putting together and signing uh, a licensing agreement so people can start playing stuff in the background and uh, not getting DMCA'd for it. But it's not signed yet, guys. <laughs> so... Don't think that, well, today, oh, well, since they're, it's likely they're going to do this, you can start, you know, playing this stuff. Don't do that. You heard it here. Do not do that. Uh, just stay, stay cautious until you actually see the ink dry. Yeah, especially since, you know, when you're streaming, I mean, you want to have the popular artists in the background, use the background music. I mean, you don't want to have that royalty free music. <laughs> For instance, this royalty-free music. <laughs> uh, it's just not the same. <laughs> uh, so TP-Link, makers of fine networking products, is releasing the Archer GX90, which, no lie, this, this literally looks like, oh, I don't know, uh, a spider on its back. It looks like something from a video game. It looks, you know what it kind of looks like? It looks like uh, a robot spider that got knocked on its back. Yes. Or what was that game from the early 2000s? It was a show. Uh, uh, the the robots that would kill each other. Um, you'd build a robot and it'd go into the ring. Only one comes out. Oh, BattleBots. Out. BattleBots, thank you. It kind of looks like a BattleBot <laughs> to me. <laughs> yeah, it does. 
So they're putting out their, uh, it's like, it's a, it's a, it's a Wi-Fi six, uh, triple band Wi-Fi router. What is potentially interesting about it is that they're, they're basically saying that there's a game band exclusive for your gaming rigs, which is either they're using one of the three bands, three you know, like radio tuning stations, almost uh, frequencies as it were just for your machine and your machine only is one guess, which again, why are you doing that wireless if that's important? But okay. Or there, you just, doing a fancy way of doing QoS for those that are into routers, you know, quality of service. Uh, Look at it, just but, got triggered. But that's kind of the point, though. If they're making that easier to do for someone, because most people aren't going to be router nerds that know how to set this stuff up, uh, me. And <laughs> so having an easier way to do it would be nice. Uh, but it does seem like it is one of the entire radio frequencies that it's broadcasting on is going to be used for a single device or devices that you specify as like, here's my gaming devices. So that when, I don't know, your sister gets on there to watch her videos of Penny Dreadful or something like that, that it doesn't slow down your gaming. So it should be interesting to see when that comes out, see what the reviews make of it. Yeah. And also, if you need something really, a really cool router in your background, that's the one to get. <laughs> Even if you also, ain't using it. Yeah, it takes up a lot of space, but, uh, you know, I'd like to see it on somebody's wall. I can't wait legs, to see. Like, glowed red when it was turned yes. on. Yes. Be sick. So it was, it was cool. Uh, all right. Death Loop is out and the highly anticipated Death Loop. Uh, but apparently uh, some of the developers who contributed did not get credit and found out that uh, in the credits, they were not considered a developer, but were in the special thanks section. Uh, so this has brought up a lot of discussion about um, you know, developers not getting credit for the work that they've done on lots of games. Uh, and the way that different studios do their credits is really pretty random um uh let's see red, red dead redemption 2 um thousands of people who had worked on that did not get credit so uh people are looking at trying to find a way of like giving everybody the you know credit they are due you know studios have a very uh, movie studios have a very uh common way of Thorough. doing things yeah Thorough way, yes, that's for sure. I mean, you uh, but to like standard too. Africa, Very standard. Second unit, best gaffers, second boy. Yes. Grip. Yeah. And it, and like and I I kind of say that in the, there's actual terms that I just don't know that are very jobs that are very needed in the movie industry that mm -hmm. I'm kind of making fun of there and I shouldn't. But yeah, I mean, they, they go down into detail yeah. and they try to name everybody they can name in the movies. Yep. Yeah. I, I think Talk credit works credits do. Well, that's true. Extras. I don't see too many extras. Sometimes yeah. you'll see extras if you like are, woman on bus. Exactly. It, like, so if you're way in the background, sure. But it sounds like these were significant contributors to the game. So... Not cool, man. Not cool. You know, if I just designed a I flower, mean, even, sure. Even fine, if they were a QA but... tester, uh, like it, mm -hmm. I'm not talking about like outsourced, well, maybe even outsourced QA. I don't know, but like not like open beta type stuff or open alpha, but like if you were a QA tester for the company, you should, you should get credit in the game. Uh, QA, QA testers. That's a tough job. Yeah. They have to play the game hundreds and hundreds of times and they have to try to make sure that they're not doing it the same every time so they can find bugs. But when they find a bug, then they got to go back and find out exactly what they did to get that bug. Yeah. And it may not be easy to get there. And I mean, like, it's that's a heck of a job. They should get credit in there as, as, just as much as anyone else, really. Agreed. Agreed. So getting credit out to everybody is 
uh, very difficult to do. And uh, something that was near and dear to a gentleman named Dan Price of Gravity Payments. Now, this isn't necessarily completely game related. Gravity Payments is credit card processing company. They're not, they're not into games. Boy, it'd be <laughs> nice if some of this got done in games because this, this guy is a young CEO of this company and uh, he noticed a, a, an employee that was kind of upset and he talked to the employee and the employee is like, man, you're ripping me off. You're like, I, I can barely even make ends meet. And he, he, just Dan Price, CEO, he thought about it for a little bit and he came back and he goes, you know what? You're right. People can't make ends meet. This is Seattle. It's expensive. Everybody is going to make $70,000 a year. Like that was the minimum wage in mm -hmm. his company. But he went above and beyond that too. It wasn't just his minimum wage. Dan Price himself, to help do this, changed his salary to $70,000 a year. Wow. That's pretty crazy. That's pretty and this incredible. wasn't, And this wasn't, this isn't a recent thing. This was six years ago he did this. He has talked at, uh, gatherings and conventions about this. He's been screaming into the hills of like, why aren't other companies doing? He goes, I have cut uh, my turnover by more than 50%. 88% of his employees when polled are passionate about their job. So much so that when COVID hit and it really caused some problems that he went out and said, Hey, we were, we're being hurt by COVID because of what our industry is. And there were people that literally took pay cuts down to 40 K a year mm -hmm. so that the company could be better. And it was voluntary. Like it wasn't across the board. It was people who could do it, did that. And, and because everybody was so appreciative of that when things got better, they not only did they increase them back up to $70,000 a year, but they also went back and paid their missing salary from those, from those like months and months and months where they took a lower salary. Yeah. And so the reason why it popped up in the news recently uh, is because not only has it been working, <laughs> he's got yeah. very, very loyal employees. Yeah. But on top of that, they appreciate him so much that they pulled their, mo uh, their money up and they bought him a Tesla Model S. <laughs> That's crazy. Oh, and he was super, super like they they got video and he goes out there and he's like hugging the front of it. He's like super appreciative. Oh, uh, so it's, it just goes to show. And, and again, it's a profitable company. It's it makes money. I, I don't know. I haven't researched enough to see if they also have profit sharing in it. Uh, I would suspect that there could be some profit sharing in there as well. Right. But uh, it, it definitely shows that you can have a growing profitable company and still pay your employees a decent amount, yes. a livable, you know, livable wage, livable especially wage. for where you're at. So, yeah. All right. Uh, I, I don't know if to end the show on like a low note or like a funny note. I think it's a, I, frankly, I think it's funny. Um, there's a streamer on Twitch, uh, Cutebot, K Y O O T B O T. Uh, she actually got banned from Twitch for a complete accident that we're not going to go into right now, but she's finding another way to make some more money, um, showing lots of skin, which is not something I am. Um, we've joked about it on the show a lot. Uh, hey, you know what? Make your money, girl. If people are going to contribute. They're going to contribute. Got to do what you got to do as long as you're playing also, by the rules. It also seems reasonable. I mean, I've seen mm. more skin at the club. That's for sure. I don't know. She's showing a lot of skin. <laughs> she's showing a lot of the skin and she's sitting on her bed. And uh, anyway, so she uh, is making money uh, now back from her hiatus. I will call it now uh, by doing <laughs> this like uh extreme dating like uh, uh, uh speed dating sorry not extreme <laughs> this kind of is extreme so if you are if you join her discord 
um, she can pick you and you can stream with her. And the people in the chat can, can, based on a poll, decide whether the date goes on or the date gets done. And it's pretty hysterical <laughs> as a as a woman. I was watching some of the um, some of the the videos. Uh, I mean, and she does shoot people down. She's she, one of the videos I saw. She was like, don't be mean, man. Like, you got to be nice to the other people. He's trying to call one of them ugly or one of the guy, other guys before him, you know, not cool or whatever. And uh, she was like, uh, don't be mean. So I haven't seen this stream. I'm probably not going to see this stream. But if this is what you're into, um, definitely check it out, I guess. You know, everybody's got to make some money somehow. Uh, I don't know, Brian, if you have more to add into this, but it is pretty funny, the whole speed dating idea. And well, and I mean, I really don't see how this is any different than like the bachelorette. Well, it, or the so, bachelor and stuff like that. I yeah. mean, granted, not all of their dates are wearing essentially a bra and something mm -hmm. else while sitting on a bed. Yeah. Sure. But I've seen those shows and yes, some of them are pretty much are that, you know, mm -hmm. they, they, I mean, hot tub streaming didn't start with the streaming community. It started yes. with the bachelorette and stuff like that. They were in hot tubs with their like champagne and strawberries and stuff. And, uh, and one thing that, so, um, a friend from chat is saying, you know, it, Sex work in general. Um, I was listening to an art NPR article about teachers who were stressed out. They've got kids at home. They're trying to teach, um, doing that. They're a single parent doing that sort of a juggle was really hard. And one of them had turned to sex work. It was making a lot of money, was able to work specific hours outside of their child being in school. And also be able to help and teach their child through mm -hmm. their online schooling. So you got to make money where you can make money. I am not, I can't hate on any and relieve stress where yes. you can relieve stress. Yeah. Cause, there you cause, go. That, that, Cause that's the other part you're saying is that yep. they were able to get mm -hmm. a better work life balance yep. by doing that. Yep. And work life balance as I, I, as somebody who has, relieved my own stress from my work-life balance. I was a very dedicated employee. I gave all I could for many, many, many years at a company. And at, at one point I said, I need to take a step back and uh, I want to hang out with my kids while they still want to hang out with me. And so at this point I am unemployed and loving every second of it or most seconds of it. It's still stressful. Uh, but I am doing what I can in this, you know, kind of half virtual, half in school type situation, what I can. And I, I have the luxury. I, you know, we are in a financial situation where I can do that. Um, but if I wasn't in the financial situation where I could do that, I can't, can't cross this off a list. I don't think anybody would watch me in my underwear, but you know, I, I it's, uh, you honey, know, there honey, are alternative solutions. <laughs> there is someone out there for everyone. everybody. You are absolutely and right. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I, listen, everybody mm -hmm. makes their own choice. Yes. If someone wants to do that more power on them, if, if it, they can, you're working if, inside if, the boundaries of, yeah. Of, uh, uh, and, uh, that are currently set. I don't think there's a and, problem. And let's be let's face it too. It's one of the safer forms of business you can do. And, and I'm specifically talking about uh, you know, what we're talking about, which is your know, webcam, stuff like that. Yeah. Not there there are, like any job, there are forms of that job that are not nearly as safe as other jobs. Uh if you are a construction worker, there are some jobs in construction that are much, much safer than other yeah. jobs in construction. But uh yes. Uh, they would watch and pay says chat <laughs> says, a support, <laughs> says a supportive non-sarcastic yes. member to yes, be fair yes. uh, thank in you. chat. Thank you all. <laughs> um, but yeah, I, I, again, yeah, but it what, is, this, it is very tongue in cheek too. You know, the, the, yeah. what, what is she, what she is doing is tongue in cheek and you know, it, it's making money and 
Good for and her. And to be clear, this is Twitch, not OnlyFans. Mm -hmm. She is she's, Twitch. This is Twitch. She's she's more on the entertainment side mm -hmm. than the sex worker side, but yes, she yes, is. Yes, using I was sex not trying to, to sell. Yeah, I was oh, not yeah, trying yeah, no, no. to. But uh, yeah, yeah, I got looped in on that. So no offense oh, so to Cutebot. No offense to Cutebot. Just so we're clear. Yeah, I don't think <laughs> she would take offense. I mean, she's. Yeah. She, I thought, thought it was interesting because, because she used an age old tactic and I'm not talking about sex here yeah. and I'm not talking about skin. I'm talking about, she found a way to engage with mm -hmm. her audience. And if you engage with your audience, that's why we call out sometimes what yeah. chat is saying. Mm -hmm. We're engaging with our audience because then they're, they are more likely to continue to engage with us. Yes. And it's building the audience. And that's what she did. She found a, she found a new way to engage with her audience. And in doing so, she is like, well, I, I think she was doing something. Yes. Yeah, you're right. You're right. So like her persona had always been that way. Right. The yeah. new way to engage was, let's me do the speed dating thing. Yeah. Well, again, yeah. Not, not entertain them actually engage with them, talk to them, make mm -hmm. them part of the stream, talk to them directly, actually bringing these people on discord video so that they're, that, you know, everybody sees who she's talking to. She's talking yeah. directly to them. That direct engagement has increased her viewership quite significantly. Um, and it's brilliant. I, yeah. I mean, almost everyone does it in some way or another. Uh, mm -hmm. she just brought it to the next level. Um, yep. Which is really interesting. I guess we could have uh, included this I'll, as part I'll, of the non-short news. <laughs> I will circle back around to that here in a little bit, in fact. All right. First up is emails. No emails this week. But if you would like to email us about any of these topics or about your own topic, mm -hmm. as you can tell, we don't just talk about gaming. We talk about a wide gamut of things that we think would be interesting to you because it got our attention. You can email us at goa at sasgaming.com. Also, if you would like to support us, don't forget to, you know, like and share it, the media through the various platforms. Subscribe, like and subscribe. <laughs> yep. And if you want a more direct way to support us, uh, back to uh, us being ungainfully employed. <laughs> Speaking of not being employed. <laughs> you can always go to our Patreon and that's patreon.com slash sass gaming. And we have a couple of tiers there. One of the tiers mm -hmm. will actually get your name in the credits of each of the got our attentions. Thank you. Uh, uh, speaking of engaging with chat, they said, nice shirt. This is my um, yeah. console wars shirt. <laughs> so it's got the different consoles warring out. Maybe there. stand up, uh, set up a little higher, Brian. Get up a little bit higher. There you go. Yeah. But like that. Uh, yeah, and I actually had a new camera angle so that the shirts were now more visible because I purchased some of these shirts for the stream. Yeah. So, yes, uh, and uh, if you go to patreon.com slash sasgaming, you could donate more money so that we can buy more shirts for the stream. There you go. <laughs> I want to see a new shirt on the stream. I don't care, but okay. <laughs> Maybe you can choose the shirt. I don't know what kind of tier that would be, but... Uh, oh, that's a serious tier. Oh, yeah, there got to be right. some limitations there. Well, it's not as bad as some of the tiers we thought of previously. That's so. true. That's absolutely true. <laughs> so speaking of sex before, work. <laughs> before we leave talking, bringing it back to how we were talking about taking it to the next level. Yeah. Uh, we, we've been working on a couple of different things. Uh, some of them were bring back Shocktober. Uh, mm -hmm. We have uh, some other series that we're going to work on getting started as well. That's a little bit more in the future. That might be closer to December before we hit that uh, and going into the new year. But I want to say next week, but it's technically this week because our podcast was late this week. The next podcast, which isn't that far away, we have a really cool thing. And not only is it going to be that podcast, we're working on trying to get this more frequent. We are actually going to have, because we've, we've done this before, we're going to have another interview that we're going to do next week. And this interview is going to be with a game developer. So yeah. that definitely got my attention. Yes. And mine and too. And 
I have talked uh, with uh, the assistance of the rest of the crew. We have talked to a couple of game developers and the we've game got studios. game studios. We've got several of these lined up. It's not going to be every week. I think that'd be crazy. We'll see later. Um, but uh, I, we did want to announce it that keep an eye out. Make sure you come back here. Thursday, 9 p.m. is our normal time. We are going to get an interview with an actual game developer next week. So if you got questions that you want to ask him, then and, and of like course that. you don't know who it is yet, but that'll be tweeted out a little bit later. Uh, we'll probably get that tweeted out probably Tuesday. Yeah. Uh, who it is in the studio. Uh, but if you got generic questions, you can send them in to GOA at sasgaming.com right now. And if you got more uh, more specific questions after you find out who our developer and their game is, then you can send in stuff like that. Uh, and we're trying to arrange some other things too. I've got some people that aren't even game developers that I'm working on trying to bring in as well. Industry members, stuff like that. Yes. I mean, maybe we'll bring on um, other folks from chat and get their opinions on stuff. So. Well, that's it for this week of Got Our Attention. Thank you very much for viewing and thank you very much for listening. And we want to make sure that everybody out there stays safe and we will talk to you next time. Bye, guys. Peace.